Senator Sanders. I wonder if the I think I, I apologize for, for being a little bit late. Uh, I am assuming this a budget is similar to the Ryan budget, maybe with a little bit more, a little bit more extreme. Can somebody tell me uh, if I am if, if this budget were to go through, uh, the Ryan budget, as I understand, that ends Medicare as we know it. Uh, somebody who's 67 years of age dealing with cancer would be given a check and try to find a uh, physician to take care of her or go to the hospital. I don't see they're going to be able to do it. What does this do to Medicare? What does it do to Medicaid? What does it do to education? First of all, let me respond because I think that's a false charge that's thrown about uh, Ryan's budget all the time is Ryan's Medicare reform, and I believe uh, Senator Wyden would, would agree with this, that it preserves Medicare for those who want to keep it. It actually does that. And the, the other point I'd make, too, in terms of the, the glide path of a 3.4 percent compound growth rate in spending exceeds the percentage if you add inflation, expected inflation rate, plus population growth. So we're, we're still, you can still balance the budget by growing spending at a level that exceeds inflation plus population growth, which again, I, th I think that's a, a reasonable way if you're going to look at well, how you're going to spend money in the government, but, say, okay, you've got to allow for inflation, you've got to allow for population growth. Let me ask growth, you, let me ask this. Exactly how many that. children does this throw off of Medicaid? What, how many Ryan's, millions? What, 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 what the concept in terms of reducing spending in Medicaid is to block grant that space yes. where they would they where they would where and they lower would, lower where the they amount would of money far more effectively than what lower the amount of money Washington. lower the amount of money can you tell me how many millions of children would be thrown off of health insurance M my guess is more children be serviced because states would would manage and it far nobody more, far more effectively nobody than we believes here from Washington and nobody believes like, what about I don't believe thought? anybody thinks Washington spending is particularly actually Medicaid is a fairly efficient health care program. And what about Head Start and child care? How many children would lose Head Start? We're going to try and have a, a okay. controlled debate here. I know it's difficult. Uh, and I'm going to turn to Senator Wyden for uh, two minutes and then back if there's another response. Th thank you, Madam Chair. And I'll, I'll, I'll be very brief. And just on this point with respect to, to Medicare, having talked about it with my friend from Wisconsin, I think all senators know I feel very strongly about getting a bipartisan approach on Medicare. But just so we're clear on the history, the paper that was put together in December of 2011 was very different than the budget resolution, which came from the chair in the House, Congressman Ryan, just a few months later, and I voted against it. And let me just be real brief on it. We cannot, colleagues, get a bipartisan agreement if the most vulnerable, those on Medicaid, really are in, a, in, a, in effect going to face the kind of suffering that you would see with a Medicaid a block grant. The second major change was the assistance for low-income seniors that was in the paper of December of 2011 was very different than what was in the Ryan budget in the spring. So that was another big factor in my voting against it. There were plenty of other differences. The paper didn't raise the age of eligibility. The paper protected the Affordable Care Act. So I just want my colleague to know that I continue to be very interested in a bipartisan approach in Medicare, but the paper that was put together in December of 2011 didn't block grant you know, Medicaid, had a much more generous rate of assistance for the low-income people, didn't touch the Affordable Care Act. In short, it protected the Medicare guarantee, this very explicit approach that protects the most vulnerable. So I just want that understood because I suspect we'll be coming back to Medicare in the course of the morning. Thank uh, you, Madam Chair. We can spend uh, a lot more time debating this amendment. Um, we do have two votes at 1125. Uh, I know the Republicans have a lunch that you need to go to, and we want to stack as many votes as possible afterwards. So um, with the indulgence of the committee, if we could get in two more amendments before the votes. That's that would be, I would support that and would just note with regard to Senator Johnson's amendment, it allows us to write the budget. It allows us to say how we do it. It just has to be balanced and uh, it doesn't direct cuts on any program. And we will have a, a lot more discussion about what the word balance means, but we'll turn to Senator Sanders and then one more amendment on your side. Senator Sanders. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, my amendment is slightly different than Senator Johnson's takes a slightly different approach because it does what I think the American people want us to do, and that is deal with deficit reduction 
but deal with it in a way that is, is fair. And what is fair is to understand that right now corporate profits are at an all-time high. I mean, large corporations are doing phenomenally well, while corporate income tax revenue as a percentage of GDP is near a record low. So that's a fact. Corporations are making huge amounts of money, and yet they're, what they are paying in income tax, about 12% of their profits, is the lowest that it has been since 1972. <laughs> Furthermore, not a whole lot of people know this, one out of four profitable corporations pay zero in taxes. So the debate that Senator Johnson and I have about how you do deficit reduction he does not, as I understand it, want more revenue. What he wants to do is cut, 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 and I believe some of those cuts would be absolutely devastating. What I'm saying is we need more revenue. All right, if we need more revenue, and actually some Republicans agree with that, what's the fairest way to get it? How do you do it? Well, a lot of ways you can get revenue. You can do it in a regressive way. We could raise taxes on the middle class working families. I don't think that's a good idea. Those people are already hurting. Now, here is, according to the GAO, Government Accountability, uh, Accountability Office. Uh, here are about one out of four large profitable corporations pay nothing in federal income tax. Let me just give you some examples. When Bank of America, Citigroup, Wells Fargo, and other large financial institutions needed a bailout, they came to the United States Congress. They got $750 billion. But when we asked them to help us with deficit reduction, Senator Johnson, you know, amazingly enough, they're no longer great lovers of America. Kind of forgot the people who bailed them out. Let me just give you a few examples of what's going on in terms of the loopholes. When we talk about loopholes, let me give you some explicit examples. In 2010, Bank of America set up more than 200 subsidiaries in the Cayman Islands, which, as you all know, has a corporate tax rate of zero, to avoid paying U.S. taxes. It worked. Not only did Bank of America pay nothing in federal income taxes, but they received a rebate from the IRS worth $1.9 billion that year. How's that? Profitable corporation receives, pays nothing in federal taxes, receives a rebate of $1.9 billion. Citigroup, another bank bailed out by the taxpayers of America, has paid no federal income taxes for the last four years after establishing 25 subsidiaries in offshore tax havens and receiving more than 2.5 trillion in total financial assistance from the Fed and the Treasury Department. So I can go, it's Wells Fargo, Exxon Mobil, Chevron, General Electric, Verizon, Honeywell, you name the large profitable corporation. Big story in the Wall Street Journal, some of you may have seen. These guys are putting their money in the Cayman Islands, Bermuda, other tax havens. So I have the radical idea that as we deal with deficit reduction, maybe we don't cut Social Security and benefits for disabled veterans and Medicare and Medicaid and education. Maybe we plug these loopholes and ask these guys to stop paying their fair share of taxes. So what we do is create a uh, deficit reduction reserve fund to promote corporate tax fairness acknowledge this problem and try to deal with it. And Madam Chair, that is my amendment. Is there further debate? Senator Johnson. Uh, Senator Sanders, you might be surprised at how much we actually agree. You, you missed my opening statement. Sorry. I think we all want everyone to pay their fair share. We also want more revenue, but the way you, you, the way you get more revenue is by growing the economy. You know, I, from my standpoint, I would love to just wipe out the current tax code, start over, clean piece of paper with, with two basic principles. Raise the revenue we need and do no economic harm. Stop economically engineering, stop social engineering through the tax code. It's a, it's a mess. It costs two to three hundred billion dollars to comply with. That's revenue the federal government can snag if we simplified taxation. I would love to work with right, well, well, you know, as you know. doing that. Okay, but let, let, me, let me just say here's a big difference. I, I come from the business world. I don't see what good it does to be demonizing individuals that are working extremely hard extremely hard, small, medium, even large corporations, to provide products and services we all, we all value. I'll tell you what, it is not easy. It is not easy to conceive of, produce 
a product or provide a service at a cost that is less than you can sell to the open public. Okay, that is a hard thing to do. That's why very, so many businesses fail. And when you, we demonize those individuals that are working hard to not only provide Senator, for themselves, where did I but demonize? all, but all their employees, Senator, Senator, oh, Senator. you're doing it all the time. So again, so the point being, the way we raise revenue is through economic growth. The numbers I cited, you missed. From 2009 to 2012, with the meager economic growth we had, we increased federal revenue or revenue to the federal government by $344 billion per year. We just returned to a normal economy by, by getting government out of the way, reducing regulations, reducing tax, or certainly not increasing tax burden, like we had in 2007. At 18.5% of GDP, that would add $435 billion per year. Add that up over 10 years. That's how you gain revenue, by celebrating success, by incentivizing it, not demonizing it, not, not having a chip on your shoulder that these people are doing some kind of evil thing. They're producing products and services we all value. That's what made this country great. Is there further debate? Madam President. Further debate. Sure. Senator Enzi. Madam Chair. Um, I think this makes a great political statement, but uh, it's a little short on how it would be done. And I know that we don't get into the details of how things are done. That's why we have a, a finance committee that uh, works on these sorts of things. But um, the last time that Congress dabbled in trying to hit the rich was the alternative minimum tax. And uh, everybody in the country is beginning to have a was beginning to have a problem with the alternative minimum tax. So we had to do some, some changes there. Um, when we try to pick on a specific thing, and you know, this sounds like it needs picking on, uh, you got to be very careful in how you do it so that it's fair and so that we don't have some unintended consequences from other companies, particularly startup companies that might be having a problem that have nothing to do with the Cayman Islands. So it, it's going to take some real care to be able to do what you're doing here, but heck, I, I not only think that every corporation ought to pay a tax, I think every person ought to pay a tax. Every person gets a benefit from something in the United States. Now, it might be just a dime, but ought to be something. For the debate on our side. Well, uh, if I might just, just respond, I think Senator Enzi is right. We, he knows and I know that there are limitations to what this committee does. We do a blueprint. We don't get into all of the details. Essentially, as I see this vote, this is not a political issue. Use the issue of fairness. So let me go on the record. I don't think it's fair that Bank of America, that was bailed out by the taxpayers of this country, that makes huge amounts of profits, pays nothing in taxes. We're not here, Senator Johnson, to rewrite. I wish, I wouldn't mind starting from zero and rewrite. That's not what we're doing. But when you talk about a desire for more revenue, I think this is a reasonable way to go. I think most Americans do. The choice that we're facing is, some of you guys want to cut, 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 and hurt working families. And I'm saying here, that I think when you have some of the largest financial institutions in the world paying nothing in taxes, really being quite unpatriotic, if I may use that word. This is not demonizing anybody. This is saying that we got, I'm on the Veterans Committee. You know, we got, as you well know, you're on the committee, I think. We got young men and women who have lost their arms and their legs defending America. And you got these guys putting their money in the Cayman Islands, not paying any taxes, and then having folks say, well, we got to cut back on disabled vets. So that's what the issue is about, and uh, I would hope that we can have support to saying, no, it is wrong that multinational corporations pay nothing in taxes in this country, stashing their money in the Cayman Islands. All right. Senator Sessions, do you have an amendment on your Madam side? Madam Chairman, Senator Keynes, yeah. would, would, would there be any objection to putting in here uh, profitable corporations who received a bailout? We should have had more restrictions on those folks at the time that we did the well, thing. It's an interesting point. We did point. some things for airlines before, and we never got any benefit out of that, although we all traveled. Well, let me ask we you this. If I amended it, would you vote for it? What you're saying is we bailed out Wall Street. I think it's what you're saying. I voted against it. If you're prepared to support it, I'll make that amendment. I'm prepared to support it. All right, Madam Chair.